Hello, I'm Giselle Bartolo. I am an EOP online tutor, and today I will be talking about stratospheric ozone to prepare you guys for your AP environmental review exam. So, let's talk about the stratospheric ozone. Okay, so the stratospheric ozone, it basically contains 97% of the ozone in the atmosphere. And the, at the ozone is what protects us from the UV radiation and the harmful radiation that can hit on the Earth. And then ozone is formed in the stratosphere by the reaction of UV radiation striking an oxygen molecule. And right there I have a picture of the ozone and that's how it's created. Okay, so your ultraviolet radiation is a part of the ozone layer. So basically what the ozone's purpose is to protect from the UV radiation to hit too much on the earth. And then it's UV radiation, It's a so UV is short for ultraviolet is short for ultraviolet and it's basically a form ele an el electromagnetic radiation and there's three forms of it and the first the first form the first form is UVA there's also UVB and there's UVC and UVA is 320 to 400 nanometers of wavelength and it reaches the earth and right there I show a picture of UVA UVB and UVC and the ozone layer and then you can refer back to that and then there's UVB, which is 290 to 320 nanometers of wavelength, and this causes blistering, sunburns, and in, and it can be associated with skin cancer. Okay, and there's also UVC, which is 10 to 290 nanometers of length, and um, it is found in the stratosphere and it's largely res responsible for the form formation of the ozone. So that's the UV radiations, and important. It's important to be able to to distinguish between each of them just in case they like ask you guys about it in the exam. So there's also different causes for ozone depletion. And then the main, co the main culprits in the depletion of the ozone layer are compounds known as CFCs, which are cl chlorofluorocarbons. And these have been increasing over the years and it is $8 billion worth of $8 billion worth of business. And then CFC forms atomic chlorine, which can destroy a thousand, a hundred thousand ozone molecules. There's also bromine, which is accountable for 20% of the depletion. And right there, I have a like a figure. It's not that clear, but it is an ozone concentration over in Antarctica, and it's showing how over the years ozone ozone has been de been depleted. And these are some of the main culprits of the depletion of the of the ozone layer. And um. Uh, then there's also di there's different effects to the ozone depletion and basically the stratospheric ozone protects life from harmful ultraviolet radiation and these ultraviolet radiation can cause different diseases as mentioned right here there's different effects that in can include inc increases in the skin's cancer some burns or damage to the skin so basically as the uv radiation goes and it hits the earth it can hit your skin and it can cause skin cancer and it can also cause cataracts of the eye reduction in crop production, deleterious effects to the animals, so basically it can affect animals as well as humans, and then it ha it also has led to reduced growth of, growth of phytoplankton, and phytoplankton, phytoplankton are very vital to the ocean's ecosystem and, and for other animals as well, and it has, this also has effect on the cooling of the stratosphere, reduction of the body's immune system, and climate change. So these are all different harmful effects that are caused by the ozone depletion. Okay, there's different strategies for reducing reducing ozone depletion. So basically, there's alternatives to CFCs, which are they you can use HCFCs, which also cause ozone depletion, but is not as bad as CFCs. So this is alternative. There's also alternatives to these halons, which are in CFCs. There's different coolings. Coolants, different pump sprays versus aerosol spray, aerosol cans. So there's different ways of the like changing the CFC use, but it's a matter of using them. And yes. So the next section I'll go over in this part is global warming, and global warming has been a very big ongoing issue for throughout many years. And basically, what global warming causes um, increase of climate change, increase it changes has many negative effects and trying to change global warming and reducing it it has been a main issue for it has been ongoing for many years so basically what, what global warming it's caused when sunlight strikes the earth's surface and basically some of the 
Some of that heat or the sunlight is reflected back, back towards the surface as infrared radiation, which is also known as heat. And these greenhouse gases absorb infrared radiation and trap the heat in the atmosphere. So there's different greenhouse gases, but what they basically do is trap this heat and it creates a uh, in, like increase of climate change. It changes the atmosphere. And then right here, I provided a figure, a picture of the greenhouse effect. There is different greenhouse gases, and then one of them is carbon dioxide. There is also carbon tetrachloride, car there is chlorofluorocarbons, halons, hydrochlorofluorocarbons, HCFCs, there is methane, nitrous oxide, which is N2O, there is sulfur, sulfur hexafluoride. So basically these are different. And then there's different sources for these, and I'll provide a link, like of the description of the different sources to these greenhouse gases. And these are accountable for the depletion of the ozone layer, for increase, increasing greenhouse gases, increasing the climate, increasing and increasing global warming. And these have increased 25% since large-scale industrialization has began. So what basically what this means, since we, there has been more industries that have like came throughout history. There's also a dramatic increase of the greenhouse gases. So there's different impacts and consequences of global warming. So these are some of the impacts that can be caused by this the change in temperature and global warming. So one of them is acidification. So basically what this means is that the lakes get more, like there's more acid in the lakes or like the greenhouse gases can be absorbed into the atmosphere, which also in return causes acid rain and stuff. There's also changes in the tropospher tropospheric weather patterns, so there's like different weather pat patterns that are not as predicted as before, so it may, may like make the like the, temp the weather more hot or different areas more cold. There's also, this also causes a displacement of people, so people migrate to different areas, they di displace in other areas where they see it's better. This also causes, um, impacts the ecological productivity which um, is uh, basically how much ecological output and like all, like the ecology around us. And then this all, this in return also increases forest fires, which there's a picture of forest fires and glacier mel melting. So as more as the, the temperatures have increased, it has led to more fires and it also has led to the meltdown of glaciers in different areas. And um, another consequence is that it increases the health behavioral effects. So as I stated before, some effects can be like cancer and stuff like that. And then there's also increases in disease. So basically what it's trying to get at is that global warming not only affects the environment around us, but it also affects our health. Okay, and then there's more impacts and consequences to global warming. Another, like some of these might not be as known or as like advertised as other ones, like not advertised, but change the fact of global warming, how it's occurring and it's increasing our climate. There's different ways to reduce it and stuff. So basically, um, it's been an increasing worldwide issue to stabilize the current global warming. Like there's been, it's been a big worldwide issue about the global warming. And there's different ways to st stabilize the current global warming crisis, and this would qu require um, different things. So the, there's one thing that could require is a decrease in methane emissions by 8%. It can also require a dec decrease of nitrous oxide emissions by 50%, and then also a decrease in carbon dioxide emissions up to 80%. So these are different ways that by decreasing different emissions that are that cause the greenhouse gases, this can also reduce the climate change and reduce global warming. And right there, there's a figure and it provides a world carbon dioxide emissions by region. And basically we see that it's been increasing over the number of years and our goal is to try to decrease it. Okay. There's also different methods. So right here is six methods that are, that can be used to reduce dramatic climate change. So these are different methods that are proposed that can also hopefully, and then they have been proven to reduce climate change. And this is for dramatic climate change. So one is increase the efficiency of cars. Another one is use, use energy more efficiently and move to more renewable energy sources. So basically by using more renewable energy sources, we can use different 
we can reuse them and stuff we use the these energy sources instead of depleting them right away and using all our natural resources at the same time so there's also fine chemical substitutes that do not slow down the rate of de deforest deforestation and include and encourage reforestation so basically we should try to find more chemical substitutes that do not like get rid of our forest and our forest life and instead we should encourage more forest life and include encourage the reforestation so that is linked to number four which is the slow down to slow down the rate of deforestation and encourage reforestation and then number five is reducing dependence on inorganic nitrogen based fertilizers so basically nitrogen based fertilizers cause greenhouse gases and this affects global warming so basically another way is to reduce the dependence on these gases and find another way, another fertilizer, another way to get rid of these inorganic substances. And then also number six is support treaties, protocols, and legislation that require reduction in greenhouse gases. So there's been different treaties that have been passed or have been um, presented, and by supporting these treaties are to reduce global warming, we can also ch change the climate. We can also reduce the climate in our environment. Okay, the next section that I'll go over is loss of biodiversity. So um, basically what biodiversity is the diversity around us, the animals around us, the plants and everything around us like in our environment and it's very important to keep that going and keep the biodiversity alive for our, for our environment. And then there's organisms that can, cap, that can cope with habitat, habitat destruction and this can be used by migrate they can use this by migration and adaptation or acclimat acclimatization so um these are three ways that they can um cope with these habitat destruction that is occurring and then plants are more susceptible to the habitat loss they're more susceptible to habitat loss than animals because they can't move so there's a picture of the deforestation and like how trees are being cut down so plants can't aren't able to change or be able to move or to adapt or migrate but animals are but still by reducing the plants and biodiversity around us it can all, it affects us at the same time there is also as i'm going to go over the migration adaptation and acclimatization in detail so migration is depends on different things so one thing it depends on is the magnitude of degradation rate of degradation so how much is being degraded around them at what speed there's also ability to migrate so are these animals ability are these animals able to migrate to different distances like birds and geese are able to migrate to warm areas during the winter but they also have to act, access these roots or crider and then basically the proximity and availability of suitable new habitats. So some animals aren't able to migrate as far, far as other animals. And right there is a picture of different migratable areas and then there's a picture of the geese migrating. Another thing that, that animals do to, um, the, to make them susceptible, less susceptible to the biodiversity is adaptation. And adaptation is basically the available to, the availability to survive due to changing environmental t conditions. So as you guys may have learned, like sometimes it gets colder, so maybe an animal um, learns to grow new more fur or to make to adapt to it by making a better shelter. So adaptation depends on the magnitude of degradation, rate of degradation, just like migration, but it also depends on the birth rate the length of the generation, population size, genetic variability, and gene flow. So these are all different things that adaptation is dependent on. And then right there is a picture of a certain animal, which is a snow snowshoe hare. So it's a rabbit, and it's, it's like a type of rabbit, and it shows how it has adapted to a certain environment. There's also acclimatization. So what this is, it's the ability to adjust to environmental changes on an individual or population level. So basically how this says, like, some people are able to, acclim like, are able to go to the mountains because they're, they have these certain genes, but there's, like, also some people that need, like, like, gear or, like, oxygen, and right there there's a picture of, like, mountain, like, people that are there. 
So, but this is dependent on magnitude and the rate of degradation, just like the other ones. And it is, and the physiological and or behavioral limitations of the species. So every species has a limitation and some can get used to other environments and others can't. It all just depends. There is also overuse. So basically what this means is that worldwide there are more than 3 million fishing boats removed and then they remove, they remove like 70 to 90 million tons of fish and selfish from the oceans each year. So basically because of these fishing boats, these 3 million fishing boats, they remove a lot of fish from, and this also is like decreasing our biodiversity in our environment. So overall almost 3 billion pounds of fish are destroyed annually by the shrimp industry. And this causes overuse, basically the overuse of the fishing boats causes more animals to die. There is also pollution, and pollution is a result from human activities such as urban sprawl, transportation, and industry, and then pollutants have devastating effects on the wildlife. So right there, as you see in that picture, there's all this trash that is like dumped out in the ocean or in the sea, and this is devastating to the wildlife because some fish or some animals can't handle all the pollution and they die and they in fact and that affects us as well because we don't get as much um biodiversity around us so um pollutants noise and artificial light can also affect the wild wildlife so these are also different ways different things that can affect wildlife okay and then the next section that i'll go over and the last section is species and conservation so basically, there's different species and there's ways to, to conserve them. There's, also, there's in, introduced species. So these are invasive or exotic species that are animals and plants that are transported to any areas where do, they do not naturally live. So what these do, they spread to non-native species that has emerged as a serious threat to biodiversity. So this has pushed rare species to the edge of the extinction. extinction. So basically, sometimes you introduce a species to a different like um, um, there's also different maintenances that and cons through conservation. So basically, there's different ways to maintain our environment and conserving, conserving it and conserving our environment, and then different um ways that we can protect our biodiversity. So some of them include properly designing and updating laws that legally protect endangered species. Other things can be um protecting the habitats of endangered species through um private or governmental land trusts. So by making different land, like land trusts or different laws, we can protect our um, environment. There's also reintroducing species into suitable habitats and ma managing habitats and mon monitoring land use. And then there's also establishing breeding programs for endangered species or creating or expanding wildlife sanctu sanctuaries. So these are di also, these are adding on to the other slide is there are different ways to conserve our environment and to protect our biodiversity. And that is all for stratospheric ozone. That con concludes part two. I will provide questions at the, on the link below. And if you guys, I hope, good luck with your exam and good luck studying. Thank you.